Ultimately, it came down to geographic luck. The inequalities of the world were born from the crops we eat. Europeans had an advantage because for centuries they've grown crops that are more nutritious and productive. Crops like wheat, which provides about a fifth of all the calories they eat. The wealth of Europe, of modern America, could never have been sustained by taro and bananas. But could plants alone really have the power to shape the course of human history? Or was there something else at play? Another reason for the division of the world into haves and have-nots. Another other steady source of food. We begin to see a process of animal domestication, by which we mean humans were controlling where they were moving, they were controlling their feeding, and they were controlling their breeding. Instead of having to go out to hunt, you have a dependable meat supply. Animals could be used for their milk, providing an ongoing source of protein. Their hair and skins could be used to make clothes for extra warmth. And the combination of these particular animals and the plants becomes an extremely attractive package in that after the harvest period, animals could be turned out on the stubble and they can actually eat the remains of the cereal crop harvest. In their turn, animal dung can be used to provide a sort of a fertilizer. Goats and sheep were the first animals to be domesticated in the ancient world and were eventually followed by the other big farm animals of today. All of them were used at first for their meat, but they all proved useful in other ways, especially with the invention of the plow. Before the Industrial Revolution, beasts of burden were the most powerful machines on the planet. A horse or an ox harnessed to a plow could transform the productivity of the land. And where did the ancestors of these animals come from? None was from New Guinea or Australia or Sub-Saharan Africa or the whole continent of North America. South America had the ancestor of just one large domestic animal, the llama. The big four livestock animals, cows, pigs, sheep, and goats, were native to the Middle East. Little wonder that this area became known as the Fertile Crescent, it's in the middle of a huge landmass, Eurasia. There were plenty of places for farming to spread. And crucially, many of those places were to the east and west of the Fertile Crescent at roughly the same line of latitude. Why is that so important? Because any two points of the globe that share the same latitude automatically share the same length of day, and they often share a similar climate and vegetation. Crops or animals domesticated in the Fertile Crescent were able to prosper at other places along the east-west axis of Eurasia. Wheat and barley, sheep and goats, cows and pigs all spread from the Fertile Crescent, east towards India and west towards North Africa and Europe. Wherever they went, they transformed human societies. Once the crops and animals of the Fertile Crescent reached Egypt, they caused an explosion of civilization. Suddenly, there was enough food to feed the pharaohs and generals, the engineers and scribes, and the armies of people required to build the pyramids. The 
same is true of European civilization. From ancient times until the Renaissance, the crops and animals of the Fertile Crescent fed the artists, inventors, and soldiers of Europe. In the 16th century, the same crops and animals were taken by Europeans to the New World. At the time, there was not a single cow or ear of wheat in all the Americas. Now there are 100 million cattle in the U.S. alone. And Americans consume 20 million tons of wheat a year. Modern, industrialized America would be unthinkable without the spread of farming from the Fertile Crescent.